All right, uh, let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Yuzo. Uh, this is ECE 341 um, Power System class. Today is our 22nd lecture. Okay, 22nd lecture. We missed our Monday lecture, so today is 22nd lecture. So today we're going to uh, keep talking about the transmission line modeling, and, and then we're going to review our midterm two. Okay. Can you guys hear me well? All right, thank you, Emin. All right, let's move on. So first of all, uh, here is a little bit uh, review of our last lecture. Now we learned the basics of the transmission line and we classified the transmission line into three categories, right? Short, medium, and long, based upon obviously the distance, right? So uh, I think you first of all need to uh, understand or remember or keep it on your cheat sheet that What's the boundary right between the short and and the medium, and the boundary between the medium and long, right? So, for the short line, what is the distance? It need to be equal or less than what? How long? Eighty kilometers. Eighty kilometers. Okay, eighty kilometers, and also is e e equals to fifty miles. Okay, no is right. Okay, you need to know the boundaries. Anyone remember what's the boundary between the medium and long then? What is it? 250, that's right. Okay, Eamon is right. It's 250 kilometers, okay. Uh, 250 kilometers, okay. So that's the boundary between the medium and long, okay. So different the distance, you will have different Model, okay. The distance absolutely matters. At this distance absolutely matter. So to the short line model, what we have is uh, VS and VR. And first of all, you need to understand the subscript S and R, respectively, representing the sending end and the receiving end. Right? So the sending end voltage is just sending the voltage toward and the power towards the receiving end. And the, in the line, transmission line has a impedance Z. And Z is equals to the parenthesis R, lowercase r, plus J omega L, and then times the lowercase L. So you need to be very, very, very clear that this lowercase r is what? Resistance, per phase resistance, per unit length, yeah, per unit length. L is also the per phase inductance per unit length. Inductance. So this is pretty much the per phase impedance per unit length. And times L, this lowercase L is the distance. Right? It's the distance. So you got the entire transmission line uh, impedance. Okay, this is the impedance Z. Obviously, we will use this Z in the calculation. And, and then we start to talk about the equations. Okay, first of all, we are trying to derive, uh, being very clear, we're trying to derive in the sending end voltage in the current in terms of receiving end current and the receiving end voltage. And also, another thing you need to be careful is yes, VR here means what? Phase voltage. And therefore, ISRR are phase current. The reason is very simple. The model here we have is per phase model. Right? This is per phase model. The per phase model, of course, the so voltage and the current in it are referred to the phase quantities, right? Phase quantities. So you need to be very careful on this. Okay. And a Z impedance Z here is, is mean meaning nothing but this guy up here. Very straightforward. The first equation is out of a KVL inside of this loop. Second equation is just a well, IS is nothing but IR. IR. Okay. It's the identical current along this, along the uh, top line here. Okay. Very easy. 
The next uh, VR is something new. Well, VR was something new. It was something new. We call it voltage regulation. Voltage regulation. This is a new term, new concept. And it equals to a ratio. Then the numerator we have VR receiving end voltage at no load. Okay. Magnitude. Okay, this is a very, very important. Now, the VR is a constant, a real number. Okay. Because in the equation we are dealing with magnitude. Okay. The magnitude of receiving end voltage at no load minus the receiving end voltage at full load. Once again, magnitude and divided by the receiving end voltage at full load magnitude. And times 100%, times 100%, 100%. Okay, this is the uh, equation or say the formula we need to follow. Then we need to figure out First of all, the receiving end no load voltage equals to what? Uh, remember, we had this discussion. Okay, and, and receiving end, we have no load immediately what? No current, right? No current, what is the result? Vr equals to what? Vs. So Vr at no load is equal to nothing but Vs, the sending end voltage. It makes perfect sense, even you think about it. Right? You're not having any load, and then you have no current. Okay, then how much voltage you're sending? How much voltage I will receive? Okay, it makes perfect sense. Uh, what is this then? Uh, I mean, receiving end voltage at full load or what? This is something given. Okay, so you need, just a need to be. Careful at reading the problem. Okay. They're given. Yeah, they're given. Okay. Maybe you see the examples to justify this. Okay. And here we talk about the voltage currents. We talk about the VR, and we also need to talk about what the power. The power is not something new. So first of all, what do you have? Three phase receiving end uh, power is just equal to what? Three times VR IR conjugate, right? Once again, we, we are talking about phase quantities. Yeah, phase. So three times phase voltage times phase current to conjugate, right? This is the receiving end power three phase. And of course, you're gonna end up with a complex number and then we will have right, active plus the reactive. Okay, so what we learned from the second module. Same thing happened in sending end, right? These are not new, uh, but just uh, you need to recall. Uh, receiving and sending and boot, uh, power, uh, three phase power. Apparent power including the active and reactive, right? That's the power. And then we have last thing uh, we need to take care uh, is the efficiency. What is the efficiency equation? Anyone knows? Feel free to know nothing about Greek letters, okay? But by we, we gotta know the efficiency, that definition, okay? Efficiency uh, equals what? Is it the same as the VR model, but instead of um, VR no load, it would be like uh, SS minus SR over SR times 100? No, 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 no. It's not like the a fish. ratio of input power or anything, like input over output power or something like that? Something like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, John is right. Uh, but his answer is something like that. 
So anyone has better answer. Anil is saying is output minus input divided by input. No, no, no. It's getting is getting leaving far away. Efficiency. We be we electrical engineers mentioned or say take care of the efficiency a lot. Okay, that's a very, very important concept. Anyone knows efficiency. It equals to what? The definition is uh, universally valid. Okay, it's not something different from one system to another. No, it's not. But here we go. Yes. Yeah, Dev is saying output over input times 100%. It's uh, very, very close. It's very, very super close. But output of input of what? You need to know this. Output what? Input what? You waiting? All right, time's up. Here is the answer, okay. Output power over input power, okay. A system or say a device efficiency is equals to and always equals to output power over input power. Okay. There is no otherwise definition. I doubt you could come across any any anything. Always so, always so, okay. However, in the power system, it need to be specified, right? It need to be specified. Is it equals to SR over SI? Well, no, no, okay. Be very careful. It's not equal to SR over SI. Instead, it's equal to PR over PS. Okay, so we are talking about active power only. Okay, this is a, a very, very important uh, because reactive power in the power system, generally speaking, is very significant, right? So you are not involving reactive power. Remember, remember that, okay? You're not using S, you're not using Q, you're using S, uh, you are using P and P only, okay? active only. Okay, now hopefully this is a, uh, uh, this has become a, a very solid impression in, in your mind because, like I said, in electrical engineers use this term a lot: efficiency. Efficiency means what? Output power over input power. Active in terms of active power. All right. So uh, these are the equations, or, or say the model we we need to understand. And if these are clear, we can move on to a example to see how we gonna use them. Okay. What does the practical example look like? Any questions before that? All right, now let's move on. In example one, let me call it example one. It is a two twenty kilo volts, sixty hertz transmission line. That's forty kilometers long. And and why connected? This is most of the uh, source are why connected. And also, uh, some parameters are resistance per phase is point. 
15. Uh, point 15. Oh, per kilometer inductance per phase is 1.3263 milli hundred per kilometers. And then we're trying to find Yes. We are efficiency. But that's all. For two different load. For a for feeding load A. A is three eighty one mega VA at A for factor maybe at 220 kilo volt B everything same just the leading give you guys a little bit of time to copy the problem and then let's read the problem and try to understand what are really given, what are really given. The problem is talking about two scenarios. One is feeding load A, another is feeding load B. Okay, two problems basically. So two problems basically. For each problem, you're looking for VS, VR, and and efficiency, right? Eta. All right, let's start to solve this problem. So obviously, no matter what, in the first step. Let's try to divide the uh, solution into different steps, okay? Uh, especially for this uh, very first example. Step one, no matter what, obviously we want to take care of the Z first, right? Yeah, Z formula repeat, repeat it here, right? And according to the given, lowercase r is what? 0. 0.15, right? Plus J times omega, right? Omega equals what? Anyone knows? What is omega here? 120 pi. 120 pi. Very good. So 2 pi times f, which is given as 60 hertz. Okay, that's why 2 is mentioning 120 pi. Okay. The system frequency is given here. Okay. Be very careful okay, because it might be different. Okay. J times 120 pi times inductance which is 1.3263 milli okay be very careful remember to involve this milli it makes a lot of difference then times the distance which is 40 which is 40. of course be very careful okay maybe you're very careful the given is kilometer and the per unit length is also kilometers they must be same if not, you need to do a what conversion rate. Right? Be very careful. Be very careful. Resistance is 0.15 ohm per mile. 
and given there's 40 kilometers, then you need to do something, right? You need to do a change. You need to do change. 40 uh, kilometer equals to whatever the miles, and then times that value, right? And then This is just the algebra thing. Uh, use your calculator to calculate what z equals to eventually turn out to be 6 plus 20j. Oh, 6 plus 20j. And no matter what, you obviously need to find z first. And after this, of course, you got what? You got a model, right? You got a model. Model is re not required, but. Uh, if you want, you can have your model established here. Let's see. Maybe visualizing the model is helpful for you to uh, go on solving the problem. This is the first step, obviously, right? And of course, in this, Example one, we have load A or B. So you might want to have your load. Uh, between the VR, right? two terminals VR. And this is a load. Reminding is either A or B, right? We're feeding uh, two different loads. Now let's talk about step two. Let's talk step two. Very important, very, very important to step two. Okay. What we are seeing, first of all, you need to see, you need to begin with load, or say the receiving end. Okay, in your mind, you know, you need to begin with the information given about the load receiving end. Let's take, take a look at these two load. Okay? For example, now we are solving load A. It is telling you a power, telling you a power factor, and also telling you a voltage. Okay. You need to be able to translate them into The voltage or power here doesn't make sense. You need to be able to translate them into whatever here so that we can apply the equation from here, right? So let's see how to translate this. Okay. So first of all, 381, this power, what is it? What is it? Active. That power should be the load, shouldn't it? Uh, power should be load. Good. So the subscript is R. Okay. Now we we figure out one thing. Anything else? Second here, uh, Sawyer is saying is SR. Good. SR. Why is S? Why is S? Units because are the, exactly. Is it because of the unit? Okay. Be be, be careful. Uh, because of the unit, this is S rather than P, and not Q either. So we figured the subscript, we figured the uh, uh, the power, and also Ryan mentioned very important thing as well. This is a magnitude, okay, very, very important. 381 mega is magnitude. It's a very, very important, okay. It's absolutely magnitude and magnitude only. You need to be careful on this. Because SR and SR magnitude, absolutely different thing. SR magnitude is just a, a magnitude. SR itself is what? It's a phaser. It's a phaser with face angle. Okay. So here is not telling you the face angle, which is not okay yet. We can't use it directly as SR. Okay. So be very careful. Here we figured by three students, 381 mega. Okay. You can't lose this uh, mega. You can't lose this mega. Okay. The second thing is very straightforward. The second thing is the power factor. The power factor, 0.8. Okay, it's 
0.8. So power factor is 0.8. Don't lose lagging. Okay, this is a very, very important information. You can't waste any bit of the information given. Okay, so you can't waste that. You can't afford to waste it. So this is two things we got. All right. Third thing also important. Uh, third thing also important is the, the the voltage here. This obviously is a voltage by the unit, but uh, which voltage this is? Vr. Very good. That's a VR. Okay. A VR. VR. And the better answer is what? Once again. What is it? This is a magnitude. Okay. Very careful. This is a magnitude. Once again, it's not telling you the, the, the face angle here. It makes sense, right? I mean, when you, when, you, when you talk about a uh, power system, you're talking about, or say, we just uh, mentioned the uh, outlet, the wall jack, saying well, 120 volt, right? Have you ever mentioned the face angle of the wall jack? <laughs> Nobody can do that, right? Nobody never me ever mentioned that. Okay. But here, when we talk about it, the given information is the magnitude and magnitude only. Right? If you need more, guess what? You need to go to the power factor, okay, which is also given there. So what matter is how we deal with these things, okay? We are, okay, it is 220K, okay? And once again, don't miss the mega, don't miss the tape. Okay? It makes, it really make difference, right? It really make difference. Okay, these are the three translated information given from where? Receiving end. Very, very important for uh, step two. Very, very important step two. Okay. You need to, once again, be able to translate the given information here. And to go back to problem a little bit further, you see what? This 220 kilowatt is not what sending and voltage. This is also talking about what receiving and voltage. Is also thinking of our wall jack outlet, 120 volt. 120 volts is sending and voltage or receiving and voltage. This is very obvious, right? This is absolutely receiving and voltage. It's load end. Does it make sense? Sending how much voltage? No, we don't know. Absolutely higher than this, right? Does it make sense? So when we talk about a power system, we are talking about our, from basically the customer standing point. I need or say my load is using or my load need 220 kilowatt. I don't care how much you send. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's basically this meaning this. Okay, my load or say I'm a customer. I'm paying money, so I need this amount of voltage. You are going to guarantee I'm receiving this amount of voltage. And how much you are sending? Well, that's not my business. Does everything make sense? All right, if no uh, comments, then we can move on. Uh, let's see how to deal with this information, okay? how to deal with this translated information. First of all, these two, uh, we need to recall what? The, the knowledge back to uh, mo uh, module two, I think, when we talk about first uh, a thing single and the three phase power systems, right? So when we, we first of all talk about the power and power factor, et cetera. So here, uh, we need to deal with this. Based, on, based upon the power factor, okay. let's do this. The power factor information itself is providing you what? Angle, right? Impedance angle, right? Impedance angle just equals to inverse, inverse cosine of the power factor value, right? 
But this is very easy to calculate it out by the calculator as uh, 36.87 degree. Now, however, however, the point is we need to rely on the lagging or leading to determining the sign of this angle. So if the lagging power factor is positive or negative, anyone still remember? Lagging power factor, the theta is positive or negative. I'm sorry, what? Positive, very good, very good. I saw several of you guys provided the correct answer. It's a positive, okay, it's a positive. Okay. But we got at this angle. Basically combining this angle with the Apparent power magnitude, what do we got? We got the real, oh no, not real, don't use this word. We got the receiving end three phase power in phaser, right? It is nothing but this. Actually, these two further can give you what? I always like this uh, power triangle. I always like this power triangle. So this is the theta, 36.87 degree. Here is the um, Q. Here is the P. This is the S. So we got S R in phaser. That's very important because later on, what we realize is what? This guy equals what? 3 VR times IR uh, conjugate, right? Now we're dealing with the, uh, the third information, the VR magnitude, the 220K. But here, uh, this is something actually easier than, than you thought. Uh, we are going to find the VR in phaser like what? Here I need to explain a little bit. Okay. We still go back to the information here. 220 volts is the magnitude of receiving end voltage. But you got to be very careful. This is what? Line voltage. Okay. At the receiving end, three phase system, when we talk about voltage, we don't have access to the neutral point. Therefore, the voltage except otherwise being told, it is line voltage. It's not phase voltage. 220 is line voltage. Once again, 220 is line voltage. So here, you want to label it here as well. This is line voltage. Okay. That's why we are dividing by square root of three. Okay, that's why we are doing so. Once again, given here is line voltage, no, always line, okay, a line voltage, except otherwise being told. And the second point about this VR is the phase angle here. We are setting the receiving end phase voltage as the reference, which means the zero, zero phase angle. Okay, so we are setting, what, no matter what, we only know the magnitude, yes, then, then we gave the phase voltage zero degree. Okay. We gave the phase voltage zero degree. So now what do we have? SR, VR, we have this two. SR, VR. 
a very, very important step too. If you make mistakes, uh, generally speaking, a uh, student uh, make mistakes in step two. Uh, step two. Okay, Let's take a look to see any questions here. How we deal with these uh, given information. This is very, very important several details we need to be very cautious any questions all right if this is clear then we move on Just based on what we have obtained, we can go ahead to find the uh, IR. Okay, uh, step three. Step three, we start to find IR. So basically, SR equals to three VR IR conjugate. That just equals to three times the VR. VR, we just have figured out. 220K divided by square three angle of zero times IR conjugate, and it's just the equals to what? We have also figured out the apparent power in phase or two. Right? So this is what we got. This is what we got. To find IR. So this is just a algebra. And the tricky part of the algebra is what? Don't miss or don't mess up the kilo or mega. Okay, this is the this is the uh, little bit tricky. And also, eventually, you have a conjugate. Okay, you have a conjugate. So if you do everything correct here, you will receive. Current as this result, one kilo, okay, one kilo ampere, as magnitude, phase angle of negative 36.87 degree, okay. And this is the uh, step three, this is step three, this is step three. Three times this is VR. Any questions? All right, if this is clear, then well, let's clarify here that the, the logic or say the procedure. Okay, now going back to this. Uh, equation equation uh, sheets. So the first question of this example is what? Asking for the Vs, right? Asking for the Vs. And later on, we find a Vr and also the efficiency. So everything is depending on what? Vs and Is. Okay. Vs and Is. So how to find them? It's very clear. The Vs, Is in terms of what? Vr and Ir. That's why we are looking for VR and IR first. Okay, this is the logic. This is the logic. It's, it has reason. It's not random. It's not a random procedure. No, it's, it's every single step is serving towards your your goal. Okay, how to find VS? You need IR and VR. We figure out VR here. Good. We need IR as well. We find VS as well as IS. Okay, IS. So now after IR, now you can find anything you want, basically. You, you, you are able to find anything you want. Okay. With IR and VR, you can find anything you want. So first of all, VS equals what? VS equals to Z times IR plus VR, right? And then you just substitute the value into it. So 620J, this is Z times IR, 1K negative. 
This is the IR plus VR is what? And then the, the rest of the thing, just the algebra. And, and if you calculate everything correctly, then the result is 144.33 kilo as magnitude of its angle of 4.93 degree volt. Of course, if you write the the kilo here together with the unit volts, of of course it's fine. Okay, that's 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 fine. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so we got the first question answered. The VS. Okay, the first question is not asking for the VS. Now, step five. Now we are able to calculate what? The, the second question, VR, okay, VR. VR is once again, VR, VR is not VR, okay. <laughs> but VR here means voltage regulation. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's mention the voltage regulation equals to what? The numerator, VR null load minus VR full load divided by VR full load magnitude. Okay, everything more magnitude, right? VR null load is equals to what? Anyone still remember? VR null load equals to what? Jesus. Vs, uh, Vs, okay, which is 144.33 kilo, angle of 4.93, right? Except we want the magnitude. Very good, okay, never forget that, okay? Never forget that. Magnitude means magnitude. A minute. Okay. Uh, this magnitude minus the uh, full load, this guy, uh, full load VR is equal to what? Anyone knows? VR full load is. That's what's given to us, isn't it? Exactly. That's the given to us. This guy, not 220, okay, not 220 kilo, no. Because your VS is obviously the phase voltage. Your minus, this must be phase voltage as well, not line voltage. 220 is line, remember? Then divide by 220k over square root of three. So VR is turned out to be 13.6%, uh, 13.6%. We got VS and then we immediately can find voltage regulation. Right? Any questions so far? If these are clear, let's do the very last one, finding the efficiency. I'll, Leave this part to you guys. Try it out. Find efficiency. Now, 
yourself. Go ahead. I give you guys like a five minutes. To try this out. You already have everything. Just uh, do you know how to use them? And let me know what efficiency you are, you received. Okay. Find the efficiency yourself. Go ahead. Five minutes. Well, I'm not expecting a so quick uh, answer, but uh, uh, Suba has already got the correct answer. 94%, uh, that's the correct value. But uh, still, the rest of you guys keep working. I will present the uh, solution in uh, three minutes. All right, let's take a look at the uh, solution here, okay? 
So obviously, uh, because the efficiency equals to the ratio between two active power. How to find two active power? Just the just to have, you need to find what two apparent uh, powers, right? So first of all, SR blue color. SR we know is this is something we already have from previous uh, calculation. VA and what do we need just to find it? The active power and the active power. What do we do? Just to convert this 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 phaser into what complex number? Is algebra conversion? It's, it's not doing any uh, uh, actually calculation right. So this expanding this to four point eight. 228.6 J mega VA, right? And immediately, know, you know that this guy is PR. Right? This guy is PR, real part. In the meantime, SS, SS is equal to what? SS takes calculation, isn't it? But you have VS and IS. Vs is what? Vs already got 144.33.93 kilo. Okay, kilo times the current Is equals to Ir. Is just equals to Ir. One angle of negative 36.8 kilo. Of course, conjugate. Now don't, don't forget to conjugate, right? So after calculation, you receive SS uh, 322.8 plus 8.J mega V8. Right? And we, we immediately identify this guy as PS, right? PS. And then... Efficiency equals to PS equals to Done for load A, of course. For load A, of course. Any questions? Any questions for this entire problem? Every step, every logic clear. Our star, when we were given that, that was for all three phases that's why we're multiplying by three for ss that's why we multiply by three what do you, sr given yes it's three phase for sure yes oh okay mm -hmm. so we're not it's, it's three phase no problem see either way they uh, should be the same right say that again i i can't hear you well should the per phase be the per phase should be exactly the same efficiency as uh, all three phases, shouldn't it? Uh, correct. Okay, okay. Correct. Yep. And that basically means what? Per phase power equals one third, exactly one third of the three phase power, right? Any questions? Any other questions? If no other questions, let me ask you a question. Look at this VR, okay, voltage regulation. Okay. This basically comparing the your receiving and load, uh, receiving and load voltage with, because we know this is the sending end voltage VS, right? But basically comparing this to sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. Let me ask you this guy. Is the load and voltage 
possibly higher than the sending end voltage. I mean the magnitude. And therefore, the resultant voltage regulation is going to be negative. Is that possible? That's my question. Anyone knows? This is actually uh, very closely related to if you have any experience in power factor correction. A step up transformer? No. No, you're not physically step up the voltage. No, no, that, that's, that's not it. It's just a transmission line. There's no transformer or anything else involved. It's just a transfer. I, just, no. I was led by Kevin. Just the transmission line. There's no anything else. Okay, just transmission line. So, is the receiving end voltage higher than the uh, sending end voltage magnitude wise? And therefore, of course, the results uh, voltage regulator is negative. Yes, it can. Okay, absolutely can. Good. And what make that happen? How that happen? Well, isn't it possible what happens if your load, like when you say full load, when the load is attached, what if there's actually a device that actually increases the potential? Is that potentially what you're referring to? No, there's no device directly phys physically boost up the voltage, no. But you're right that it's because of the load, okay, different load. You need to think uh, in this way. I don't know if you guys know. Um, in the power system, in the power system, e, uh, most of load are inductive, right? Most load are inductive load. Making your power losing a lot of reactive power. You're short of reactive power. Then what happened in transmission line is the voltage magnitude is decreasing. You're losing voltage. This is the consequence of having inductive load. How to compensate that lost voltage? Exactly, capacitive load. That Kevin is right this time. You're compensating the voltage by adding capacitive load. A capacitor bank in the power system is what is for what providing reactive power therefore boost up the voltage transmission line voltage okay. i don't know if you ever think or ever seen the power system plan to use a lot of capacitor bank what they're for they're providing the opposite side reactive power towards those load inductive reactive power. It's trying to compensate that so that you can bring, take the uh, voltage magnitude value back up. So reactive power in the transmission system, power system, is related to the voltage magnitude. Okay, Remember this if you, uh, if it cannot be completely understood. So this is uh, regarding what the load B. Okay, load B is leading power factor. Leading power factor means what? Capacitive load, right? And you are expecting to see maybe the results of the VR, the voltage regulation, is what? Negative. Negative means what? Your capacitive load is too big, right? You you gave too much reactive power to this transmission. Then 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 your your load and voltage is is even higher than the sending end voltage magnitude. All right, so uh, if these are clear, um, let's move on to the uh, review of midterm two. Okay. Take a look at the midterm two here. Now, by the way, the uh, the 
project is due today. Hopefully you guys have already submitted. Uh, and here, oh, here. Uh, also, I think it's fair to, to bring up the uh, Obviously, the statistics of this is the statistics now we, we, we eventually end up with. Okay. And uh, obviously, the overall performance this time is, is pretty good. Yes, overall performance this time is pretty good. And, and I'm not seeing any any big problem at all. I need to be repeated assessed in the last exam. I'm not seeing anything like that. So I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna get, what I mean is keep this problem just in the midterm two, or, and it won't be repeated in the midterm three. Okay. And this is what I mean. And here. Uh, just a, just a very close, but not exactly 60 over 60. We have one student here. And the lowest students, uh, 30 over 60, well, shouldn't be. In midterm two, which is not very difficult, you shouldn't get 30, which is 50%. No. And here I have to bring up, um, uh, we do have students uh, cheated and be found with solid evidence. And so he obviously, uh, uh, cannot receive any credit uh, from this course anymore. Okay. And also a kind of a warning to everyone here that don't even think about that. Okay. Uh, go, don't, no matter what, don't go to, go on to that route. Okay. Um, you can't afford the uh, consequence. Okay. I promise you. Uh, and then come back here. Uh, we basically have 30, we have 30 students of 13. That's almost a, 50% is, is beyond A minors, equal or beyond A minors, then like I said, nothing to worry about. Okay, nothing to worry about. Uh, but of course, you know, we still have students need to uh, work harder. Is midterm two is 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 not difficult. I don't think it's, it's something difficult. Okay. If you really struggle with it. You need to think about how did you study. Yeah, you need to think about how did you study. Did you really study? Uh, any questions regarding the grades, regarding the uh, uh, like the the canvas, the exam, everything? Uh, because it's it's already almost Thanksgiving, so everybody should establish the concept that if you want to keep on track everything, you want to go to the module, right? You want to go to the module. Right? Module contains everything. Everything is organized into the module. I spent hundreds of hours into organizing the module, so hopefully you are fully utilizing that. And, uh, and other than that, the uh midterm two first problem is is gauss uh, this problem is a little bit uh, it's an interesting problem uh, in terms of the solution here okay. um this is also telling you the importance of keeping certain amount of the digits after the dot and we derive x of gx. Every, almost everybody knows what to do this. And then we are go ahead to derive x of 1. Uh, the key point is how many digits you want to keep. Everybody knows this is the result, right? However, if you only keep this amount of result, and then what you find is you need to go further. 
step two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. However, if you keep digits like this, what do you find? Immediately, x of zero is the solution, right? Immediately, you got the solution, right? You got immediately, you got the solution. Okay. And if you got more digits, more than four here, uh, I can't remember, maybe three, five, and then you gotta have different number of steps of iteration. So this is how many digits you keep here is determining actually to some extent the step number, okay, the number of steps of iteration. And of course, another factor affecting the number of steps is the accuracy. You know, how many, how many digits here, right? This is the only thing I, I want to bring up. Other than this, I I really not seen any problem we need to worry about. You know. A second problem. I think everyone is fine too. However, there's some uh, calculation mistakes here. I probably you need to be careful when you type into the calculator. And also, I reminded you guys, it's it's not a good idea to to convert the given phaser here into a complex number. Okay, it's not absolutely not a good idea. Well, the reason very simple: when you do the conversion, you are doing what? You are doing rounding, right? And once you do rounding, what do you have? What do you find? Your result gonna 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 deviate from the reasonable result. You can try to calculate the S12, which is already given. If you calculate the S12, and before that, you're converting this V2 into a complex number. I saw someone did uh, V2 here is equals to, can't remember the real, real part, but the memory part is minus 0 0.01 J. Wow. The accurate value is 0 0.009 something. However, if you run it to 0 0.01, you might feel it's not a big deal. However, you will find eventually your results in the power, in terms of power, is that actually deviating quite a bit. Okay. So when you do the calculation here, you're not doing rounding. Therefore, you're not converting the given phaser to complex number. You're not doing that. You directly use the phaser exactly the same, these number and these amount of digits, type them into the calculator. You're not doing running yourself, otherwise your resulted power is going to deviate. This is the only thing. Second thing is the given here or what? Oh, I have already mentioned here, right? This is this is this is a this is a even more convinced convincible. I mean, line admittances. I, I'm not. I'm even telling you that these are admittances, not impedances. Second, in the second clue is what the y, right? The simple is not z, but y. Admittance means what? Admittance means the current equals what? Voltage times admittance equals to the current, okay. rather than divided by. Okay. So there's there's uh, three or three students or about three students make such mistake, but that gonna make you lose quite a bit. And that's a basic concept issue. It's a basic concept issue. Voltage times admittance equals the current. And other than that, once again, uh, it's it's fine. It's fine. And be careful when you place the power active one on one side, reactive on the other. You can't violate this. Problem two. Problem three here. You, uh, well, I think the only thing you need to be careful is is what to problem three. What you have is F. G, right? And uh, 
you objective function you can use s x square plus y square but remember the question is asking for what square root of f which is the distance don't forget to do square root that was two points okay. however your objective function feel free to use like uh, as x square plus y square the equality um constraints is is this what oval right this is the oval isn't it this is the oval and we also have a inequality constraint so as long as you successfully identify them then then the rest thing is is it's okay. It's okay. And at last, don't forget to do square root. Yeah, several students forgot this step. And that's it. That's it. Okay, that's it. The last one, I'm not seeing any trouble e either. Everyone knows what to do. So first of all, you have four generators, uh, four generators, and then just calculate the uh, the lambda first, right? And it's a big equation. Uh, not much uh, mistake in this equation. I, I'm almost no one made a mistake down here, and the result are a result is this fine too. However, this is units. You need to be very careful. This unit is dollar per megawatt hour. You need to understand this, 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 and then, and then, and then you go ahead to find P one through P four, and then CT minimum or optimal. It's just a C one plus C two plus C three plus C four. Algebra thing. Of course, the, at last, don't forget that the question is asking for the total cost of difference between optimal dispatch and evenly share. Evenly share this time, you know, evenly share, right? Just the what? You divide by four, then, right? And then you go to the C1 through C4 once again, and then find a difference between them and see how much money you can save. I'm not seeing uh, any trouble in, in this problem either. Any questions? Any any comments? Any feedback? Anything I can explain more? Anything? Well, as I said, I, I, this this time is is very good. So I I don't think uh, you need to worry about it. Yeah. None of these problems are going to be repeated in midterm three once again. Okay. And thank you for your efforts, and thank you for attending today's lecture. Talk to you guys after the break. Okay. All right. Have a good Thanksgiving break and uh, see you later. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs>